Well, we hope that uh, the new urban agenda will impact. And the way it could impact is for women to use it as a tool, a tool to fight for progressive policies, policies that address issues that women are confronting, like violence in public spaces, lack of incentive for economic empowerment, uh, to confront the discrimination and subordination that they are often submitted to within uh, the organizations they belong to. So we hope that the language that is there is used by these women to fight for policies at the government levels, at the many government levels they have to fight for, and also to be used as a tool within the representative organizations, because women belong to cooperatives or to unions or national movements and, and networks, and they have also to do a lot of work inside these organizations to be able to be respected, to have a say, and to be part of rule-setting processes. So hopefully, the new urban agenda, it's going to be a tool. I think organizing is key for me. You know, from my experience, organizing is key to cooperation, it's key to influencing, it's key in participation in rule setting processes. So I think it's, women have a better chance to have their voices heard and respected if they organized in cooperatives and in networks of cooperatives and if they organized as unions and if they also interact with other social movements because we you know sectors have their specific demands and struggles that they have to put forward but in order to uh, be able to influence things in a broader scale and to influence things in ways that are transformative. You have to interact with other movements, with other sectors, because it's by having a broader understanding uh, of what cities are and about what are the uh, required policies for cities to be inclusive and sustainable that you were really able to contribute. So I think organizing and networking with other uh, groups, for me, it's one of, uh, of the key uh, things. I think one of the key things is to have laws that make uh, gender-based violence accountable for. So in my country, for instance, in Brazil, there is a law called Lei Maria da Penha. Maria da Penha was a woman, a battered woman. She nearly died because of, you know, beating up from her husband. And she fought, you know, uh, for a law that could enable some policies, some processes in place to protect battered women. And as a result, uh, we have a system that is not perfect, it's far from perfect in terms of implementation, but there is a, there is a system in place. So someone who is beaten up uh, from a husband or whatever, male, can, ask, can go to the police station and, re and request a woman police officer to look up, to, to talk to her and for, you know, for filing the, up the process, can, she can ac have access to a kind of net supporting network if she has to go in, into hiding. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing is to have, you know, frameworks, legal frameworks that gives women this kind of supporting systems. And the other things is uh, legal frameworks, uh, urban 
legal frameworks that support women, especially informal workers, to access public space to earn their livelihoods. If we take the example of street vendors who earn their living in, in the streets by selling goods, why can't we have you know, uh, a system, an urban economy, economy where an urban vendor, street vendor, can coexist alongside a, alongside a retail shop or a kiosk. You know, why can't we have informal recyclers access recyclables that are out there in the curb? So we need a legal frameworks that are more inclusive uh, for the urban uh, working poor. In Portuguese, we have a saying that goes, that goes like that. Mulher bonita é mulher que luta. So if I translate into English, it says, a beautiful woman, it's a woman that struggles. So I think the key for women's empowerment is struggle. Struggle, fight, get organized get together with other women organizations, get together and form alliances with other uh, sectors and struggle, struggle, because this is the key.